Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to another social emotional workshop. Uh, today we are with Lisa Kaplan from Henry Ford Health, and we are going to be talking about uh, the facts and the truth about alcohol use and how it affects your body. Uh, Lisa, we're so glad to have you back. Welcome. Thank you. I'm happy to be back. So today we're talking about alcohol. You may know that alcoholism, which is the name of the disease, is the disease that alcoholics have. Um, as we've talked about in the past, it's not a choice. It's not a character weakness. It's not a character flaw. It's truly a disease. So where I work at Henry Ford Health System, we treat the disease of alcoholism as well as other drug addictions. So when a person says that they're an alcoholic or they have the disease of alcoholism, it does not mean that they're an active user at this time. It could mean that they are in long-term recovery. But once a person is addicted, they are always addicted for life. So a person could uh, be an alcoholic in recovery. So alcohol is the primary drug problem today. It's the most common reason why people would seek treatment. So in our facility, which is inpatient and outpatient, about 80% of the inpatients have alcohol as their primary drug of choice. Some are also using other drugs, but most of them are using alcohol. So as you know, it's legal. In Michigan, and I don't know about other states, I know some of you are from other states, um, the legal age to drink, to purchase, and to per possess alcohol is 21. So it's very prevalent in our society. You can't go to a nice restaurant or to a Pistons game without having alcohol be present. So there are people who are social drinkers and they will never, ever develop the disease of alcoholism. But there are plenty of people who can be social drinkers for a very long time, let's say 30 years, and they have no problem whatsoever. But that 31st year, they cross the line into alcoholism. And once they cross the line, they can't uncross the line. So a person then is considered alcoholic for life. So for adults, it can take a very long time to become alcoholic or not. It can happen fast. And it depends on a person's overall health. Um, what are they, what other drugs are they using? What is their biochemistry? But with teens, it can happen very, very, very fast, usually in less than nine months. So a teen who starts using regularly can become addicted quickly. Um, the other thing we've looked, we've spoken about before is how alcohol use or any other drug impacts brain development. So if our brains are not fully developed until the age of 25 and a teen starts drinking alcohol regularly earlier than 25, what he or she is actually doing is priming their brain for addiction. So um, it can really impact the developing brain as we've talked about before. It can create um, learning issues as well as mental health problems. So all, so what, what we want to do is educate our kids that a standard size drink, so a 12 ounce can of beer, a five ounce glass of wine, and a one and a half ounce shot glass of liquor, all have the same amount of alcohol in it. So there are some teens who think, oh, this little shot glass, this isn't going to hurt me. It's such a small amount. But what they don't understand is it's the same as drinking a beer or a glass of wine. So we want to educate them, of course, that um, they're all equal in terms of their alcohol content. Have you heard the term binge drinking? I'm going to guess that most people have. So what is this? This is a pattern of drinking that brings a person's blood alcohol content to 0.08 or more. In Michigan, 0.08 is the legal limit for driving. So that transfers into about five drinks for men and four drinks for women within a two hour period. Okay, so five drinks for men, 
four drinks for women. And I don't like telling people that because then they think four drinks for men and three drinks for women is safe. And it's not. It just doesn't meet the, the definition of binge drinking. So a person who is a binge drinker doesn't necessarily have an alcohol use disorder. They may not be alcoholics, but certainly they've got problematic drinking. So teens in particular think that you can drink a lot and then you can sober yourself up. So how do you do that? Well, fresh air, cold showers, drinking coffee, all of those things. So ask yourself if you think that helps. And the truth is it doesn't. But what we see in movies and on TV is we see it, um, we see that these people have made these attempts to sober up and it really doesn't work. The only thing that works is time because it takes time for the body to have the alcohol go through it, be metabolized or broken down by the liver and then excreted from the body. The only thing that can make that happen is time, not coffee or cold showers. So you might've heard the term alcohol poisoning. That's when a person's body has consumed too much alcohol too fast for the body to metabolize it and excrete it on time. So in other words, it's like an alcohol overdose. Okay? And people die from this. Okay? Their blood alcohol content is so high that they die. So I have seen patients with a 0 0.40 that is sky high. Okay? Most of us, if our blood alcohol content was 0 0.40, we would die. But the reason they don't is because they have built up a tolerance over time. But that really is sky high. So we certainly want to educate teens that you, um, if you're going to drink, and of course we don't encourage that, be very aware of been drinking and alcohol poisoning. And also be aware that there are people who do not have access to alcohol, and yet they have a craving for alcohol. So what do they do? As um, sad as this sounds, they drink mouthwash, which has alcohol in it. Um, some salad dressings contain alcohol. And the other thing to be concerned about is if a person is in recovery, there's foods that have alcohol in them besides salad dressing. For example, tiramisu, the really good Italian dessert, is made with alcohol. Um, certain things like rum cake is made with alcohol. They say that the alcohol bakes out and the flavor still remains, but are we certain that that's all true? So someone who's in recovery should not even be eating rum cake. So a few things that our teens need to know. Many teens have gotten the message that it is not okay to drive drunk, okay? Not okay to drive under the influence. But what's interesting is they have not gotten the message that it's not okay to be a passenger in a car with a driver who's been drinking. So they know that they will not get, get arrested for drunk driving, but they could still be in a car crash that could disable them or cost them their lives. So they need to um, be aware that that can happen. Another thing is MIP, minor in possession. That is at least in Michigan, it is a ticket for somebody who is underage who is either possessing or using alcohol or in the presence of alcohol. So let's say that I'm a teen and I'm at a party at a friend's house and I'm standing at the kitchen counter and there's a can of beer on the counter and I'm not drinking it at this moment, but it's near me. I could get, if the police came in and they saw that I could get an MIP, a minor in possession ticket. Another thing that teens need to know is that, um, is that all teens don't drink. If you were to ask them, many of them will tell you, yeah, everyone does it. It's a rite of passage. Everyone drinks. The truth is, though, that this is not true. So they do confidential and anonymous surveys in schools that are in person. And teens take a survey and what they've discovered is while the perception is that everybody's drinking, the truth is that they're not. In fact, you may know that over the years, teen alcohol use is decreasing. What's concerning is that teen marijuana use is increasing. So they're not drinking alcohol, 
but they are drinking marijuana. And so lastly, we, we wanna talk about some health issues that can happen for people who are using alcohol. So the short-term effects that parents or maybe teachers are likely to see are slurred speech, drowsiness, vomiting, diarrhea or upset stomach, headaches, breathing difficulties, distorted vision or hearing, impaired judgment, decreased perception and coordination, unconsciousness, um, possibly a coma, a blackout, which is a big chunk of time where a person is behaving normally, but part of their memory of that event is missing. So they black out even though they're functioning normally. It's not the same as passing out. And of course, people can die from drinking. So long-term effects, unintended injuries, such as car crashes, falls, burns, drowning, um, also injuries such as firearm injuries, sexual assault, domestic violence, on-the-job injuries, um, loss of productivity, lots of family problems, broken relationships, health issues like high blood pressure, stroke, seizure, and other heart-related diseases, liver problems. Um, the biggest, the most important liver disease that most people have heard of is jaundice. So when a person is using alcohol for quite a long time, what happens is their liver doesn't function as well anymore and they become yellow. The whites of their eyes look yellow, their skin looks yellow. Um, it can be very, very frightening to see someone who is um, in the advanced stages of alcoholism and has jaundice. It also causes nerve damage, sexual problems, permanent changes to the brain. We call that wet brain. It's not reversible. It's like when a person's brain is so damaged that their functioning is never gonna come back. Um, a vitamin D, a vitamin B1 deficiency, ulcers and gastritis, which is inflammation of the stomach walls, malnutrition, because what happens is a person continues to drink alcohol is food and water become less and less important. So they become malnourished and dehydrated. And I'll bet you didn't know that alcohol use can cause cancer of the mouth and the throat. And of course, we all know that it can cause death. So how is alcoholism treated other than going into an inpatient treatment program and getting education and individual therapy and um, learning the tools to prevent relapse? Well, we also use what we call medication-assisted treatment. And this is the way of the future. We are very, very lucky to have these medications and they're doing research all the time, developing newer medications to help people stay in recovery. So many people think it's a crutch. And where I work, we don't believe that. It's like saying to someone who's using insulin to treat their diabetes that you're using a crutch. Okay? It's because their body needs it and it helps them to stay in recovery. So it is an effective treatment. So Anabuse is a very, very old medication that I'm sure you've heard about before. It's a medication that is taken orally once a day. And if a person takes the Anabuse, they know that if they were to drink or use a product with alcohol in it, they could become violently ill. So it makes them not want to drink. Okay, this is a really old, but a still effective medication. The problem is it's only prescribed to people who can handle it physically. And depending on a person's liver functioning, some people cannot handle it physically. So what happens then? Well, someone who can't handle it or even someone who can can be prescribed another medication even at the same time called naltrexone. So this is a medication that's taken orally once a day or by injection every 28 days. And what it does is it reduces cravings to drink. It helps people to cope with the triggers. And if they were to drink, it reduces the feel-good feeling. So in other words, they can't get high, they can't get drunk. It's not enjoyable. 
So it makes a person not want to do it. So there are people who are on naltrexone only, and there are people who are on anabuse only, and there are people who are on both, okay? And lastly, another medication that is taken orally three times a day is called Campril. And this medication decreases cravings and reduces withdrawal stress and treats very uncomfortable symptoms that we call post-acute withdrawal syndrome. Those are a whole host of physical, emotional, um, cognitive symptoms that people feel when they are in early recovery. So the problem with these medications is that except for the injection, a person has to be motivated to take them every single day. With the injection, they have to be motivated to make an appointment with a medical provider within 28 days later to get another injection because if they don't, then the effects wear off and then they can drink. So this is the way of the future. We're very happy to have these medications and stay tuned because I'm sure over time you'll be hearing about more and more. So with that, we will open it up to any questions or comments. You guys feel free to unmute and ask your question, or if you prefer, you can type it in the chat and I'll be happy to read it. Lisa, I do wanna ask, with those medications that you were just speaking of, is that coupled with um, like a therapy treatment so that the individual is changing the mindset as well as? Yes, for sure. It's never enough to just take the medication. Um, so that's why we offer individual group therapy. We also offer educational lectures to teach the tools and the skills that they need to learn how to prevent relapse because medication is really only supposed to be a short term, um, you know, a short term prescription because over time, if they're learning everything else they need to know over time, they will no longer need the medication. Okay. And the symptoms that you describe um, someone who is using alcohol, this is when it is in excess, not just um, the person that drinks occasionally here and there and in, you know, small amounts. Yeah. So it's fine for anybody over 21 to drink a little bit once in a while, socially, responsibly, no issue there those people will not be prescribed these medications. These medications are used to treat alcohol use disorder, which is an addiction to alcohol. A social drinker is not addicted. Okay. You guys, questions, comments? Okay, then we will bring this session to a close. Thank you so much, Lisa. Our presentation was excellent, very informative. I learned something every time we have them. Um, thank you for joining us, everyone, and we will see you all next time.